You know what kind of variant of Jun John's on, Wyatt? Nope. Don't really know either. Oh, maybe this is just Monored Obosh. Cause it's definitely not Odrazi if uh if he's playing Obosh, because then you don't get to play Thought Not Zero, which is arguably the best one. <laughs> turn one relic. This might be like a prison deck if he's playing turn one relic. Probably start the timer. Oh yeah. So Michael's on, he had Blood Moon, I think, was that two Bone Crushers? And a Bolt, and a Spike Field Hazard. Spike Field off the top gives him a land drop. Might crack this Relic to draw a card and try to hit another land drop. Second discard spell, gonna be a Thought Seize. Takes one of the Bone Crushers. Was that his second thought seize? No, it was Inquisition and two thought seize. Okay. Michael choosing not to pop the relic to draw. Probably planning on a stomp here on instep. John shocks in a overgrown tomb and then plays a Liliana the Veil. Speaking of Liliana the Veil, guess who's back in standard? Isn't that crazy? Wyatt wasn't around when Liliana the Veil was literally like the glue holding Jun together back in the day. The, the queen of those mid range grindy decks in modern. But. I think he upticked Liliana, but then Michael stomped. That's what it looks to like. Deal two to the Lili Liliana. Could, uh, yeah, bolt it to get rid of it. Um, John's pretty happy with that. It's basically a three for two if you count the card John discarded. Although Bone Crusher kind of doesn't count as a. Kind of counts as a two for one itself. Ooh, four mana Turok kicked. Makes uh, Michael discard. A fury. Turok not not likely to be very good against a mono red deck, but uh when it discards the last cards you have in hand, it's generally pretty good. Only gets one counter though, because Michael only had one card in hand. There is land number three. Liliana is my favorite ten dollar card. It's interesting the the finance part of Liliana because some people were projecting, you know, like oh there's going to be a huge influx of supply, so Liliana's price is going to drop. It's not really played in modern anymore. And other people are like, are you crazy? Liliana demand is going to go through the roof, um, at least on MTGO, and. Packs aren't open that much on MTGO because it's no one plays limited on there anymore. I shouldn't say no one. Not it's not as big as it used to be. So people were projecting that Liliana's price on MTGO would actually rise in paper. I feel like it'll drop. So many packs are going to get opened of this set. I think, especially because they put the what is it Legends packs in there. They, they found like the warehouse of legends. Isn't that what the set is? It's like an old set. Maybe I have no idea. Yeah, they found like a warehouse of old cards and they put some of the cards into the packs for this next Dominaria set. All right. John sees in Pyromancer, draws him some cards, makes some elementals, it looks like. I believe those are. Michael down to 15 now.
So they were saying it was legend packs they're putting in there? Yeah. Yep. Someone confirmed in chat. Yes, legends. Yeah, I think this set's going to get opened a bunch. So far, it looks like really high power level. I mean, you've got Liliana of the Veil, um, and it's also a set where they're okay with putting, like, I mean, it's kind of a weird card to go off of, but Lightning Strike is a card that wasn't in standard, you know, which you normally think power level of a set should have Lightning Strike. Like, I feel like every standard format should have access to Lightning Strike. That kind of irks me when, like, a set doesn't have access to just, like, you know, your basic, like, Essence Scatter, uh, Negate, Lightning Strike, Shock like some kind of a cantrip like opt or consider and then like green should have like a basic ramp spell I feel like i feel like those should be evergreen in like every single standard format not every set but every format but all right john absolutely asserting himself now board full of dorks And looks like Michael picks him up. Yeah. All right, game two. Michael will probably be on the play. Also, Michael could just, you know, have like a turn two Blood Moon or something. And I mean, that's there's the turn one Ragavan. And Inquisition. Uh, looks like Michael's on three more lands and two spike field hazards. Wow. So down to one spike field hazard. Definitely depending on this Ragavan. I mean, he does have Den of the Bugbear down the line as a, another threat, but Ragavan is extremely powerful. Can definitely take over a game. Hits up a Seiju. Up to three. Let's see if Michael drew anything. No, he's just gonna pass John. Shock's in his stomping ground. Pass back to Michael. Plays a land, gets in with Ragavan, gets terminated. Smart by John to wait until combat there. Um, you don't want to do it on your turn and have Michael just dash Ragavan in. The legend rule prevent if you just wait, the legend rule prevents that you know John from playing a second Ragavan. Croak says the play from John. Looks like he's stuck on two lands. Still his action though. John is very susceptible to a Blood Moon right now. Drew two Shocklands and hasn't drawn any more. Michael might choose to get in with... Oh, nope, going to add Obosh to his hand. I was going to say might choose to get in with Den, but... Love the new Painland design. Uh, Yeah, I think they look really good. I really like the... The art on the new pain lands. It is weird that they only did six, but I'm sure they're gonna do the other ones in the next set. But uh that's that's also a big ad for like Pioneer. Some of those enemy colors or allied colors getting pain lands. Did Mike not know if he spiked the croak site gets exiled? Might not have. That's uh that is a good line. What does that mean if he spiked it? Um, the what's that card called? Now I'm wanting to say lava spike, but that's deal three to the face. Spike field hazard. If you spike field hazard, uh, the creature that 
if it dies this turn mm-hmm. after taking damage from spike field it gets exiled so if they play a croak so you can spike field it and then it'll just get exiled it's like admittedly that's a two for one for yourself but you're saving yourself from having to deal with the absolute menace that is croaks of being escaped later yeah but I mean, maybe Michael was just valuing, you know, the card in his hand over that. Like, John was stuck on two lands at the time. Certainly not the case anymore. Michael gets in with the den. John's going to slam a Seasoned Pyromancer on his turn. Michael slams a Fable the Mirror Breaker. This card is so much value in one card. So a relic got popped there, um, taking John off Crooks, I believe. There, I had Wyatt go out and make uh, Michael a homemade Goblin Shaman token. Looks like another season pyromancer from John here. Oh, going. Yep, slamming that. Discarding. To Lance. So it doesn't make any tokens, but does draw John some fresh cards here. Looks like two Ren and Sixes. Yeah, he has two Rens in hand. Honestly, John might be down to play Ren, ping that little 1-1, one, one, and just get in with uh, the, the two twos. He doesn't care too much about them dying right now because he has uh, the mana to bring them back. Or to, to activate them from the graveyard, I mean. You might not ping the 1-1, one, one. you might just attack. Okay. I'm gonna ping it. Attacking with the one season pyromancer. Michael is gonna take that trade. Untaps has Fable taking up to two after the draw step. Can discard some cards. Cabs kind, what's up? Looks 
Looks like another Fable in hand, a Spike Field Hazard, something else. Just discards Spike Field. There's a second Blast Zone. A return. That cleans up the Season Pyromancer and the leftover token. And slams a Fable. Michael might be in a good spot here. Possibly outgrinding this Jun deck. Three standard legal cards out in a modern deck. Yeah, Fable has become a... Very strong play, even in modern. I mean, for three mana, you get two, two twos with upside and a looting effect. All right. That fable transforms. You get a den activation. Den activation and get in for a bunch. Michael getting in for six here. Unless he's sending some at the Wren. Looks like he's not. John channeling the Takanuma, I think is what that land is called. Saga Jund or Boomer Jund? I believe it is a what the kids would call a Boomer Jund list. And by kids, I mean you, Wyatt. I, I don't use the word Boomer too much. <laughs> like, close to never. Yeah, give me that Apex. What's up, Video West? Okay, Boomer. <laughs> All right. Bolt the Flipped Fable. If uh, you've never seen someone untap with the Flipped Fable, it gets uh, real gross. I've seen people play Furies and copy them, and, you know, the copy enters and deals four as well, and then that is a 3 3 double striker with haste. Some really gross plays with that flipped fable. And Michael has another one now. John definitely needs removal for this fable. Is uh, activate Den of the Bugbear and then copy Den of the Bugbear uh, a possible line? I don't know if it can target that. 
Got to read Fable. If I think it just says creature, and if I'm not mistaken, Den says it. Reads. Yeah, just a target creature. Yep. So it would read Den as a creature, and then. Oh, down. but it'll be a tapped land. Oh, because Den says that it enters untapped or doesn't enter untapped. Gotcha. I like Talarian Terror. That's kind of a cool threat. It's definitely my style of play, but uh, can't really compete with Treasure Cruise and Pioneer because that can't really run those together. And then it also is very obviously not as good as Murktide in Modern. So it's like, and it competes with it. So, all right, John, Thoughtsees, turn one. You don't like the new Liliana art? I liked it. I I thought it was cool. The chain veil in the mirror looking like like she can't escape it. Can't escape her past. The old art has boobs. <laughs> That's okay. Ch uh, touche. I mean, yeah, the the old card is like iconic. I won't say I like this one more, but I like this art. All right, another thought sees. Probably gonna take that fable. Yeah, takes fable. Plays a den untapped and passes. Michael sitting with a relic in play. That relic is gonna make that croaks a. Uh, not super great. John's going to fire it off anyways here. Oh, maybe Michael's considering that spike field line. I don't feel like it's necessary when you're just sitting with a relic in play, though. Okay, I think he was just deciding which card to discard. <laughs> you, you, you reading that, Darren? Yeah, I read it. All right, Michael slams a Seasoned Pyromancer, discarding another Seasoned Pyromancer in a Spike Field Hazard, gets two 1-1s one to draw some fresh cards. That Seasoned Pyro in the, the grave is just kind of valuable, too. They should have used the old Lily of the Veil art. I mean, I'm not going to say no to new art. It's like, you can still just play that art if you want. I think it's cool, and it, it makes sense that it's, I mean, because now we're in domin back in Dominaria, you know, with a different part of the story. Like, she's not going to look, at, like, she's going to look older, and it's a, it's a it has a different meaning this time. So I, I think it needed a new art. Even magic lore. What about it? I, I don't understand the point of magic lore yet, but I mean, I'm still a new player. I don't see the, like, I, I, I guess I see the point in it. I don't see effectiveness of it, though, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's just cool when it, it kind of, I mean, some people, you know, really get into the lore. I used to uh, really follow the stories. Um, I don't as much anymore. But magic has some great lore. I really like the, the magic lore. Badass either way. I think it would have been cool style points. Don't disagree with anything you said. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the old art is, like I said, it's iconic. You can't. It's like one of, probably one of the best cards, like art wise and just the total, you know, one of the best cards ever printed. Not just like power level wise, but just like objectively, like it's a really cool card. It's very iconic. John chilling with a grist in play. How do you follow the story? I don't even know where to go for it. Um, yeah, there's YouTube channels that will that will break it down for you and do it for you. But I used to. Uh, there was a podcast that 
that they did like voice acting for it and read it, read the story. Uh, what was that called? I used to listen to that while I did like housework or worked outside or something. I don't know if they still do it. I remember when they were on Dominaria original, not originally, but like uh, the this most recent time, not counting this time. I listened to most of the story then, with like the whole Bolus arc and everything that you know was happening. So, oh, Michael with the instant speed Kozlex return there, I believe, and then John follows off with a Turok making Michael discard that Chandra Awaken Inferno in hand. The Chandra could have been game ending if uh, Michael got to resolve it. Balcanius, I did know that about Emrakul. All right, John has assembled a big board here. That's a uh, Hidetsuku consumes all as well, I believe. Dealing with those relics. Michael evoking a fury. Can deal with all the creatures on John's side of the board, I believe. Gonna go for... Oh, just reading Grist. All right, deals one to the insect, one to Ragaman, and two to the the Torok. Like the lore when someone tells me it in highlights, but I barely have any time to watch or play. Yeah, I mostly just anymore. I just pick up on the lore from the cards and what people tell me in the general you know, vibe of the set. <laughs> it's like it mostly tells you everything that's happening just from paying attention to the cards. All right, that Hidetsugu transforms. Gris is ticking way up, all the way to eight. Another relic in play makes the Gris ultimate not really very threatening, but uh, what does its ultimate do? It deal. It's like minus five deal damage equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard. I think. I pulled up. As long as Gris Song um each opponent loses life, you get a number of creature cards in your graveyard. Yeah. Tiller engine? Oh yeah, that card's like Amulet of Vigor on a body, basically, right? It's kind of wild. I don't think uh, I don't think it's exactly playable in Amulet um, because it's the fact that it's a creature. Wait, that's a commander only card, dude. 
Why do they do this? Why do they release commander only cards the same time as the regular set and then they all get put in the same spoiler? I don't know what's what. It's called you just thank your good old pals at Wizard for And the symbol looks almost identical. I can I see the difference now, but I didn't recognize I didn't realize it before. Is Jund playable right now? I I don't know. I mean, it's playable. I don't know if it's like what I would pick if I'm trying to take down a uh, RCQ or a a big, you know, 10k or something. But that's another fury from Michael. That uh... got rid of all John's tokens. Yeah. Oh, croaks. That's a big draw. John, I, th I think he didn't um, didn't cast that spike field. Oh, I think he was tapped out, so he couldn't. But has to discard the spike field. John might be able to fill up his graveyard quickly enough to get that croaks online, and he can just kind of chump block this fury forever. John just fine, just jam and mage two cards in it. Definitely need to jam a few MH2 cards in it to make it good, but... I think that's what we're seeing John here do, just having some Modern Horizon cards sit throughout. Alright. I believe Michael scooped. 